Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through my team review for round two and what was an all right round. Um, I ended up with a score of 14-4-4. Um, now up, up in the ranks by I believe um, by 240 odd, 241 to be exact up to 15-30. And my team value isn't in that bad of a state. I mean, it's a lot behind. It's still 300,000 behind the top teams. But it's not in the worst um, state, as well as the fact that I do have 58k left over compared to, I think, a lot of these teams have a little bit less spare. So I don't think I'm in the worst spot. I mean, I've got a pretty stock standard... Um, forward line um compared to most it's just the midfield that i think i'm slightly behind in a little bit and i mean the back line i'm not too bad off and i'm fixing my ruck this week so it shouldn't be too bad um next week i'm just wondering how the these other guys or other people up there in the ranks move considering um what i'm doing to try and catch up and whether what i'm doing is necessarily the right, right way around it so before we get into the video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here, I'll try and hide as much as I can um, with in terms of the player scores. Um, Carney, 63, just didn't really get into top, top gear and is one that I think is going to be traded out in the next little bit, probably next week. Um, to pound as I look to try and upgrade that um, defense next week going against all the principles that I had laid out in the um, in previous I guess weeks because of just the gap between the um, midfielders that I have and the leading uh, midfielders in the comp um, so yeah Carney is that's quite annoying um, Tiny Evans 74 she was actually really really good and is a keeper uh, Charlotte Thomas, 58, is starting to get back into form, and um, yeah, I think it's fine at the moment, and I wouldn't be surprised against Carlton if she goes large, then you got um, Head, 69, she was returned, she's actually going to be one that I think surprises a lot of people and can consistently pop out 70s, meaning that I don't think we're going to need to address that area for the uh, near future. I mean, she's up 76k for the season, 65k that round. Has a really good, I think, break even this week as well. I think it's um, considerably another 10, 15 lower than it was uh, last week. So if she pulls out another um, 69, that should go up by another 80, 90k. And she'll start tracking towards that 800, 900k. And we did have a little bit of a slowdown uh, with Priest and stuff like that. So it should help with um, covering that ground to get up to her as quickly as we can. Cordner, 94, was absolutely huge and went up um, 241k because of it. Um, and yeah, she's just in uh, a great role, obviously. And yeah, I was slightly surprised, even with Pound coming back, that Cordner did um, continue that role. But it's really good to see that she did. Uh, she'll be highly owned, I think, for the whole time. And Heads is kind of a, a pod, but... Um, and so as Thomas is getting towards that territory and her and Evans, I wouldn't be surprised, flip um, this time. And then I think a lot of people will get off Carney in the next couple of weeks as she hopefully can hold enough value. Uh, she did drop 38k with a, um, a 63 and a, she needs, I think she's going to need an 80 to hold value. So um, yeah, hopefully she can get an 80 or something like that or else um, she's going to need to be upgraded. And then McDonald on the bench with a 20. Uh, she just needs to go. She's just not going to be gaining cash. And luckily for us, there's a West Coast debutant that we can just slot in there for 300k, gain the cash from that, and uh, move on. Uh, then we move into the midfield, and Marinoff, um, 250. She was absolutely huge with the captaincy on her, and yeah, just really happy with that. Um, Swanson, 83 against, um, who do they play? She got tagged away by a single, as we've been talking about all through the, um, all through that, uh, game review. That was quite annoying, but I mean, sting single scored well. So, um, it was just annoying that Swanson had to sacrifice potentially 20 points and most people still have, uh, single. So Swanson is probably going to go as she plays Carlton and I need to look at Carlton's stats, but, um, I believe they've been... Um, I think that Carlton have actually given away a lot of um, points, so it could be Conti that goes instead of Swanson. We'll just see where what happens there. Conti, 94. Again, she's played the two, two tough teams, so 
I mean, it's not the end of the world, but um, you would like to see that a little bit higher. And she does come against GWS, so I might... Um, I really don't know who to get rid of out of Swanson and Gonti, and that's something that I'll need to decide. But, I mean, it's only, what, 2k difference, so it doesn't really matter. But we'll just see with that um, who I get rid of in the end. And then you've got Davey here, 98, uh, 1.174 mil. Uh, just a really good score there, to be honest. Um, and, yeah. Just really happy with that move. I think she's really still underpriced. And she went up, what, 100k from that move? 129k just from that game alone. And then Bonnichi, 103, was a huge um, huge game changer. And hopefully she can do it for another couple weeks before we get her up to a big, um, a big, big uber premium um, with her. And hopefully Bowers, with Bowers going down 46k, um, and her break even Bowers probably being 145 or so. Hopefully, she Bowers just hits like a ton or something like that. As a 45 point miss or 40 ish point miss from Bowers could be amounting to a, another 150 100k drop in price at least. Um, and that'll be that'll really put her on par with um, like Ghana and Robottom and stuff like that and can really help um, to at least get her into the side quickly. Um, and Anthony, 69, uh, brought her in. She gained, what, 193K. That's really, really good. And, I mean, I really do want to be able to hold her as I still think there is a lot of value there. But uh, she might need to be... She might need to go because, I mean, she is playing West Coast and it would be very, very, very bold to um, start her against West Coast um, and get rid of, like, Conti for massive upgrade in here, as I don't really see there being much upgrade, um, in the back line, to be honest with you, um, it could definitely help me upgrade the forward line, but, um, yeah, I don't see there being much back line upgrading, uh, possible this week, to be honest, um, then you have, it, it could really do, that could actually be a plan to get me up to the best Ruckman in the comp, and be able to, while well, Strom, who seems to be running away with the Ruck, um, at the moment, her and Moffat getting, if I can get Conti to, um, Conti to, um, get Conti and Haw out for, um, day, um, for, sorry, Moffat and, a, a rookie midfielder, and then also potentially spend some more, um, some more cash, or potentially, yeah, it, it, it all depends, but we'll see on that front, I did try and mess around with it a little bit, but I just couldn't see a way to get, I don't think, um, unless I do Davies, Conti, and I think Anthony might work in getting up enough cash, but I'll work, I'll fiddle around with that after I do this, uh, recording, but anyway, Davies, uh, 44, just really annoying. And then Hall, 32, just really annoying again, not um, not getting the cash gen. I mean, they went up 81k and um, 29k, but I was predicting 80k each. So for them to do that was pretty annoying. Then we moved down to the forwards, and this is where I sort of, I mean, Gardner is 29% owned, Malloy, 31, but having them both is absolutely huge. They're the engine of the Swans team, and they'll be putting up high scores each week. Phillips, 55, came up against uh, Brisbane, which is a really, really tough matchup. So not the end of the world with her. And I think she's absolutely fine against St. Kilda, who... Um, St. Kilda beats Western Bulldogs, didn't they? Um, no, sorry. Well, who does St. Kilda play? Um, let me bring up St. Kilda. Uh, here we go, St. Kilda. St. Kilda played Essendon and lost. So um, I don't think they're the greatest side, to be honest. And I think Port will... Um, that's a positive matchup for Port. So I think Phillip should do fine. Roberts plays Carlton. Carlton haven't looked the greatest. Neither has West Coast. So I think it was fine to have her. I think she just got stuffed over a little bit um, with some injuries and stuff like that in this um, second week. And she should be fine. I mean... It, I think she's honestly fine, to be honest. And um, if she can just get that kick-to-handball ratio back, uh, that would have been a 65, almost 70 if she got it into the right areas. Um, and that's still fine as a forward. Gardner we talked about, and single we talked about with Swanson. But yeah, single's effort was really, really good. And she went up 133k. If she can go up another 130-odd k with a good performance against Collingwood, then we're really looking in the money there, and we can quickly transfer her. Um, up to any of the, um, like a Morrison or a Too Good or a Row or something like that who have um, the, um, I guess, the right role as I don't think, 
I think Single has the right role. I just don't know if she has the scoring capacity, and the scoring capacity would have to be through um, Hall, but I need another week of Hall because of that um, really conflicting scores. And if Hall doesn't if Hall doesn't go well this week or something like that, then it doesn't look good. Whereas Morrison has had two pretty stock standard games, plays North Melbourne this week, and then I don't know who she plays next week, but North should be a tough matchup. But if she goes 90 again, then she'll probably jump up another 20-odd K to 1.1, and Single will probably be able to be moved up to her, or Phillips or something like that if um, Phillips isn't performing the best. Then you have Stratton on the bench here, absolutely monster score from her. Um, and Cash Gen will come quickly with her. She gained 155k, and if she goes 70 again, she'll gain 200, 220k, or something like that. And that's just a mammoth um, Cash Gen, um, Chen, uh, Cash Gen from her, 18% owned, so she is relatively highly owned. And then you have Nan Squeen here, uh, 537k is probably going to be a trade out for mine. Um, as she did score 49, gave away a lot of free kicks, which isn't the greatest thing. Um, and just seems to be a little bit stuck um, with her role necessarily. And, um, I mean, what does she spend time on ground? Time on ground was 77%, not the greatest time on ground, to be honest. So, yeah, we'll probably trade her out, to be honest, um, and move her on. But that is pretty much the video. Not the longest video, as I try and get this out um, very quickly. But just, yeah, round two in the books. Um, a little bit behind, but not, not out of the fight is the main message, I guess. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.